Welcome back to another episode on Oak and Rock Fatherhood. I am your host, Zachary Small, joined by Anthony Migliorino. Anthony, what's going on, brother? Nothing much, man. Doing good. Almost Christmas time. Get ready for some good family love and peace. That relaxation that comes around this holiday period. I mean, it's winter, so you start kind of buckling things down, bringing everybody in, you know, warming up together. You got presents coming around, Santa's playing, you got all the holiday movies on. It's It truly is, I shared recently, you know, kids make this a magical time of year. A lot of the men that are watching this, you know, they're, they're family men, they have children, or they're looking to have children. And I can say to all of you that if you enjoy the holidays by yourself, you enjoy it with your lady, it's amplified tenfold when you have kids involved. It just makes it so much more enjoyable. Has that been your experience, or do you hate the holidays being around your family? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, man. No, I love it. It's um, it doesn't it doesn't even have to be a holiday. Let's be honest. Um, when I think when you're around people who who uh, respect and love and who you find value with, it, it's enjoyable, right? No matter what, uh, but especially during the holidays. Um, you know, this year, not to not that it matters, but. <laughs> My wife and daughters put up the Christmas lights. Um, I'm not capable. So <laughs> it's just cool to see, right? It's, it's it's cool to be in that vibe and everybody enjoying it. And, um, you know, I look forward to it. it. It does get better with age as well. I have found out because you know the person better. They're more involved into what's going on. You know, I remember the first time I could hold my kid up and they put the star on the tree. And now, you know, they want to do all the decorating and running around. And then I'm sure, you know, as adults, they're even more involved and wanting to get, and they have their own ideas as to ways to go. So it's, it's a journey that keeps getting better. And like I say, like good marriages, same thing with family. They, they age like a fine wine. They get better with age. The longer they run smoother, they operate better, but they're the taste, you know, the enjoyment, the, the fun that comes from it is also much better. So the fruits from your family, you put in the work now and you keep putting in the work, you know, the longer you do that, the better it gets. It's not like you put in the work now and it's good for a while and then it falls off a cliff. You know, people talk about the wall with women. Oh, they turn 40 and then they're they're miserable old women. No, that's not how that works. You know, that, that that's not a real thing. And they say the wall's undefeated, but time's undefeated. And so your family, if you don't put the time into your family, you're never going to get a victory. You'll always remain defeated. So put the reps in and then you get to enjoy the holiday season. You won't be the man saying, oh, I'm so stressed out. I have to see my in-laws. I got to see my kids. No, man. It's Christmas time. It's almost New Year's, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we dive into that, though, make sure you've liked and subscribed to the channel. This is what we're doing, bringing family-focused content. And Anthony, you know, you said the ladies put up the Christmas lights, and he did a little nod to what's going on in that left shoulder. So let's talk about that for a second. We recorded the video on <laughs> overcoming weakness. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that video out. But how are you feeling? You know, you had the surgery. You're back in South Carolina. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. I uh, taking it one day at a time, trying to get uh, sleep sleep when I can. I'm in pain, but I'm good. It's, are you it's sleeping like in a chair? Or are you sleeping in a bed? Um, I wouldn't say I'm actually sleeping, tossing and turning <laughs> in bed. But uh, you know, I'm trying. Listen, I'm trying to make the most of it. I got my family supporting me. You know, every everything I do, they I'll go to the fridge and I'm trying to like unscrew a water bottle. Like, do you want me to help you? I got it. I can, I can do this maybe, but um, it, it's good to have people who care about you, and it's good, you know, like we speak about all the time. You're down when you need help. It's good to have others who care enough to to reach out and help you, whether that's family or friends. And I think that's you know part of the uh, reciprocity, just to having a mutual relationship with people. Where you say, hey, you know, I'm I'm here for you if you need. And then you see it come the other way, right? Oh, we're, we're here for you if, if you need. So it's, it's good to see things play out how we we kind of plan, right? We set those goals up, how we want our family to look, how we want things to to take shape. And when you see it actually happen, it's it's awesome to see. You know, it, it confirms the belief that if you do these actions, it'll lead to these results. You know, it's easy to think before you've done the work. Well, what if what if I do all this? I make myself better. I invest in you know being more peaceful in connection with my family, and it, it doesn't matter. They're still miserable. We're still suffering together. And that's just not the case. You know, if you improve your home life and you you actively work to share with your family why you're improving your home life, well, then you have the experience you're having right now. You know, it sucks. I don't wish that you like at all. That sucks ass. I've had shoulder surgery. It's terrible. And the reason I asked about sleeping is I I couldn't lay down because the shoulder would, like feel like it was falling back and it was excruciating. So I had to sit like in a weird, 
recliner chair. <laughs> it sucked. But again, my family was there. You know, and for all those men, the stuff we're talking about, the reps that you have to put in to make your life better, you got to trust the process. I understand, you know, you're going into YouTube, you're trying to make things better. And oftentimes you'll come across content that says, we got to make yourself better. And we say that as well. The king has to eat first. But it can't solely be on you. You, you know, you cannot solely place the focus on your improvement and it, at the expense of the family. You know, when you improve with your family, you let them know why you're eating differently. Let them know why you're saving the money. You know, let them know why you're doing this versus that or changing habits that you used to do. You know, let them be a part of the process. Give them that gift of knowing more about you and why you are the way you are. If you can do that, again, you'll be the man who's maybe when you're hurting or you're down for the count, who have kids running up, hey, can I help you? Hey, I want to make your life better. A wife who's supportive. Hey, you know what? I got the lights this year. It sounds funny, you know, because it's like Christmas time, you know, hanging lights. But at the same time, it's the thought that you're after. Somebody that genuinely cares about you and wants to support you. You know, I'm seeing it with you with that surgery. You know, I see it here with moving my family down to North Carolina and just rallying together. I think a lot of men would be, they'd be in a much better position and a much more content, you know, less anxiety on them and pressure to perform if they just trusted the process instead of trying to rush it and get there or I've got invested in me, you know, relax, slow it down, put in the reps that we're talking about, bring that piece to your family. And honestly, if you can do that, you can make 2022 the year that you turn everything around. It can be the full year where you go all in, you commit to it. It's, I'm going to say it's just one year. We all learn in 2021 how long a year can be. <laughs> a lot of things have happened. I put myself in the category of an exceptional amount of things can happen. <laughs> like there were so many grenades thrown in my path, yet I've never been more at peace. I've never been more connected. I've never been healthier. I've never been wealthier. I've never been more content. My soul you know, that, yes. that I used to have that performance and pressure to perform. I have to do, dude, I'm, I'm probably the most chill I've ever fucking been. And it's been objectively the most chaotic years of my life. And I'm fucking, I've been around a long time and I've deployed. <laughs> this is worse than those years, man, with just the insanity. At least that was controlled insanity. So yeah. it's, I'm glad we're doing this. I'm glad we're doing this 2020, U, uh, 2022, new you, whatever kickoff. <laughs> but more than that, we've got five topics we're going to hit. We'll dive into that. But before we do, Anthony, do you have anything you wanted to add to that little monologue? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect no, to say man. that, but it kind of just came out. No, that, that's uh, that's good, man. I think, it. you know, you have to reflect on the year that, that's past 2021. It's been crazy. There's been a lot of things that we've never seen before. I would say just like you, man, I I don't want to say I saw this coming, but uh, I, I wouldn't expect the world not to be crazy. You know, I've been around for 44 years now, and um, it, it seems like it's getting crazier every year. So in 2022, let's have some some plans, some goals. We can help our family, our kids, and we can help them strive to to improve their lives, to you know, to pursue excellence in their own lives. And and a lot of that is going to be done through us. So definitely, you know, let's hit on these goals. Let's talk about what fathers should be doing for 2022. So we've got our top five pieces of advice, top five goals you should be setting as a father looking to maintain peace or create peace within your home. And obviously it makes perfect sense that the first one is to stop hitting your kids. Make 2022 the year that you stop using physical force. You stop using excessive verbal force to get what you want from your children, to get compliance, to get behavior correction. There, there's nothing outside of the category, no, no exception to this rule. Stop hitting your kids this year. Make 2022 the year that your hand does not raise and then fall upon their body. There is no need for it. <laughs> so if you're a father listening to you say that, Zach, what would be a reason why, right? What a dad said to you, why, why does that matter? Why did I stop hitting my kid in 2022? How's that going to benefit question. us? No, that's a, that's a great question. So when you remove the violence, you now allow, you create a void. Well, what happens when you're not spanking? What do you have to do now? Now you have to find a way to connect. Now you have to find a way to meet that objective or to get your child to see where it is you're trying to lead the family. Not just that. By creating that void, which can be filled with something more positive, you also have to reflect on your behavior. You have to be more emotionally controlled. 
you have to learn why are you doing the things you're doing? Why are you yelling at the kid for doing X, Y, or Z? What I, you can't hit him, so now you got to reflect. All right, well, what am I going to do with him? You got to figure that out. Well, why do I care? And then you find out a lot more about yourself. So this is much less than the literal act and much more on what's causing you to act out like this. So by removing the spanking, what how is that going to benefit you? You're going to be able to connect with your child and you're going to be able to connect with yourself in a way you've never connected before. You're going to know you and you're going to know that kid and you're going to be able to bring a sense of, hey, instead of working against each other, let's work together to get you where I would love to see you go, which is as a parent, the best life. But also me, let me recover from the things that maybe how I was brought up and find new tools to use to raise your child in this modern world and heal in the process. I think by removing this spanking, it allows the opportunity for a reassessment of self. And in that comes all those closets that have the skeletons in them, in them, you start pulling them out one by one. And you find that that weight that's on your soul that's driving you to just act out the way you're acting out, it, it's less and less to where we're going to start seeing men. I mean, we just had this cigar lounge with Justin Copeland. So big shout out to those guys. But you're in there with a group of men who are saying, oh, I'm starting to see how I got to this point in my life. And now I see how I can get better. So when the father gets better, the man gets better. He's also showing his children how to be better. So it's a, a win-win situation is how I see it. Yeah, definitely. I think if in 2022, if we can get more fathers to understand how powerful that is, that they don't need to physically hit their kids to get them to listen or to stop crying or to stop behaving. Um, once we can do that, I don't care if it's five men, 10, a hundred thousand, the, you know, the more, the merrier, but I think it is important what you said, right. It is to look within ourselves and realize that we're acting this way because of shit that we got going outside, right. Our pain, our frustration, there's anger inside of us that we don't know how to deal with properly. And, um, it's sounds pretty, you know, crazy to just say, stop hitting your kids and things will change. That's exactly what happens. Like you said, yeah, you have to find better ways. You have to improve. And <clears throat> you teach your kid what healthy relationships look like. You know, you, you teach them that, hey, man, in 2022, this family is going to crush it. We're going to be more connected. We're going to stick together. We're going to support each other. And there's never going to be a time where me as your father, as the biggest and strongest man in this house, is going to abuse that power. He's going to physically hit you, strike you down make you feel like shit because I don't have my shit together. The goal is I'm going to get my shit together and we're going to flourish as a family. Um, so that's to build on what you said, man, it, to remove spanking and stop hitting your kids. You Most know, I never thought about it in this light until you just said that, but by removing the spanking, that's like, like for me, removing the alcohol, my sobriety didn't make me a better person. It just made me stop doing dumb things. You know, it removed a lot of the, the negative consequences I was suffering from alcohol. When you remove the spanking, that in itself do, does lead to you not doing worse damage. But that's not going to fix everything else. That's not going to change the trajectory you're on. It's what fills that. So instead of alcohol, you know, for me, it became healthier habits, better workouts, cleaner eating, cleaner drink, like better hydration, <laughs> you know, and a clear head, which allowed me to work a lot more. Removing the spanking allows more discussions, more connections, more emotional regulation. It's these follow on things. It's not just the literal act of not doing the thing, not drinking, not spanking. Awesome. What do you do instead? That's going to define whether that was a good decision or poor decision, you know, and it can be the greatest decision of your life. It was for me with sobriety and for no other reason then I am so much more clear headed that I can do all these other things I'm trying to do better. So it's not spanking. You can be doing things great, but if you're still hitting your kid, there's always going to be that anchor. Get rid of the spanking drop that anchor, you know, drop that weight vest and then take off and flourish with your child. Like you're saying, that connection is so much stronger when they're not afraid of you. They shouldn't be yeah. afraid of you. Yeah, just but then you work together. Watch, <laughs> watch what happens, right? Definitely. Um, all right, so the second thing uh, on the list of goals, uh, this is family goals, right? As family, as father, we should be setting goals that we do as a family together. And one big thing with my family that's been a goal that we've we've established, we, we do it most every night, uh, unless somebody's working or there's other things going on, is family dinner, super important to us. And anybody who's struggling to connect 
any father, any family, make sure you're setting time aside for family dinners. Sit down with your kids, sit down with your wife, have everybody be involved, right? Don't make it like a prison sentence where you have to sit at the table because dad said so. That's not what I'm saying. Make sure that you guys are enjoying it. You're sparking conversation. You're letting your kids actually express what they need to get off their chest, what they want to talk about, and listen more, right? That was one of the, the big things for me is when I started listening more, instead of thinking I knew everything and talking about everything, my kids actually opened up a lot more and we had much better conversation. And one of those things too is like a little trick I use is three things about your day. And I'll be like, tell me two things that were great about your day and one thing that wasn't. So if you're looking for like, well, I'm just starting out. How do I talk to my kids? There's an easy one for you. Hey, you know, tell me what was the best part of your day? What was the worst part of your day? What's the funniest thing? And you don't just sit there and interrogate them. It's more of a passive, just genuinely caring. Like if you care about your kid, like, oh, hey, you know, how was your day? What was the best part of your day? They tell you like with a big smile. All right. Now, what was the worst? Like, oh, I didn't expect that. But then they'll break, they'll, they'll break it down for you. Like, hey, this happened and then that happened. And then he did this. And you're like, cool. And you kind of get to see their how their brain works. You get to see sort of the the hierarchy that they're in with their friend group and how that's all working out, you know, how they're doing with their friends, what their friends are up to. You know, it it allows them the opportunity to tell you what's really going on between their ears instead of their their pre-built answer. I'm fine. Nothing. I had fun. No, man. Like there's more to it than that. You just gotta you gotta get them to see you they have all oh, total permission to talk about whatever they need to talk about. You know, you talked about the habit of, of family dinner time. So I'm going to go a little more uh, cliche with New Year's. And what we're going to be doing this year is on New Year's Eve. I just made that decision. I was going back and forth on day or Eve. On New Year's Eve, we're going to go through Vibrant Dad's Dad Time Prompt Journal for Dads and Kids. So this book, it's a prompt journal. It's nothing that's incredible. It's nothing that's you know too complex or anything. It asks you questions to go through your kids. So I just random page. If you're a superhero, what would your name be and what powers would you have? If you could be any animal for a day, what would it be? It's questions like that. We're going to go through this whole book. And right after this podcast, I'm going to order 10 more of these. And we're going to do this for the next decade. And for 10, we're going to have 10 years worth of books, man, to go back. What were we all thinking? My wife and I and the kids, we're all going to do it. And we're just going to have a decade's worth of just goals that we were setting. And then looking back 10 years from now, hey, remember when you wanted to do this? Did you do it? You know, you can do that the next year. You can do that years down the line. But I think that's going to be pretty fun. So family goals, but it doesn't have to just be that. You know, it doesn't have to be that one time thing. We were talking earlier. What about setting a family goal of running a 5K this year? Running a, a Spartan race, you know, signing up and having the whole family do a thing. There are so many things for your family to train for that sometimes we lose it in our sense of personal accomplishment and achievement. I want to run a race. I want to lift a weight. I want to weigh a certain amount. I want to make a certain amount of money. I want to have a certain look. I want to reach a certain follower count. There's so much that I, I, I want to do. If you're in a family, there also needs to be a we. We are going to go on vacation and and go see a bodybuilding competition. We are all going to make sure we go to a NASCAR event. If you're into that, you know, what is the family about? What's important to you? And then go and do that thing together. We are going to make sure that we run a half marathon this year or the Spartan trifecta. I mean, there's, there's, it's going to be unique to the family, you know, a fucking rocket building convention, something don't let 2022 be the year that we all sat around and did jack shit, you know, but operated as individuals. You're a team operate as a team, train as a team. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that leads us into the third thing. So if, if you can make family goals, uh, whether that's doing healthy things together uh, physically or even mentally, right? Building on the mental and physical health of your family, of, of everybody together, right? Not just you as the father, but if we're actively pursuing things that make us better, right? If we're pursuing physical activity, if we want to lift weights, uh, you know, I've mentioned before that my kids are in the gym all the time, right? I can't, I can't get my son out of the gym right now, but the lessons, everything was there because the goals that I set for myself reflected <clears throat> onto my kids. Um, <clears throat> same thing with, you know, mental health, right? Have a goal that we're, we're going to focus and we're going to work on uh, increasing and building the, the mental stamina, the emotional intelligence of our kids. Make sure that <clears throat> what we tell them, how we speak to them, everything we're doing is building them up, is, is making them more confident, encouraging them to do things. This way, 
when when bad things happen, they don't fall apart, right? They don't get beat down. They're not disheveled. They don't let these setbacks distract them from continually working and, and getting fo- uh, moving forward and getting better. So physical health, mental health, uh, very important to focus on in 2022 because there's going to be some crazy shit coming down the pipeline. <laughs> Sh- shut off the news. Turn the TV off. Don't be distracted and focus on what's going on in your home. That's one of the most important things we can do as dads. And I think those controls too, they serve as the buoys. You know, 2022 is going to be a wild year. And in case you didn't know that, we're letting you know now. <laughs> like, buckle up and be ready. <clears throat> but the point is, if you have made it a point that 2022 is the year that we're going to we're gonna really lock in the minds and the bodies, we're going to take one day a week where electronics are gone and we're just sitting and having conversation in the living room. You know, we're, we're not going to constantly be on the grind, 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 grind. Push it all the way to the end until it breaks. No, a year is a long time. It's also nothing. You know, at the same exact time, a year is a lot and it's 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 just a year. Like it's, it's going to happen either way. So you might as well make the best of it. If the world is going crazy, but you've established these routines, your world, your your inner world is still controlled. It's still stable. It's still peaceful and connected on the strong foundation. So yeah, politics might go insane and lockdowns, and whatever coming down the pipeline might happen, but you still have your day of the week that you're sitting and having those conversations. You're still having your nightly meals. You're still making sure you make it to the gym, you know, and you're still turning yourself into your strongest, smartest, and most at peace self you've ever been. And while that should be the goal every year, I mean, obviously we should always strive to be better, (laughs) a concerted effort to really stick to it, to really go in on it this year. It is the perfect time to do it. I have found, dude, I, I really locked my shit in. You know, I started this 2017. I would say 2019, I was on the probably the, the cusp of making my, the fork in the road. I'm either going to fucking go or I'm going to fucking blow up. And then 2020 came around and and the, the choice was made. Got sober, locked my shit in, really doubled down my efforts on everything I was doing. Connected, we built this. You know, then now 2021, 2022, 2025, 2030. These things are all decisions that came all the way back to making the concerted effort. Like, no, I'm all in on this. I, I am not, there is no safety net. We're just going to go. We're going to make this shit happen. If you make next year your year where you make that choice, I'm living proof to tell you right now, it will only get better and you will never regret investing in yourself and in your family. You know, and that's that's a universal statement. That goes for everyone. No, 100%. Um, <laughs> trying to phase out the dogs. I don't know if you can hear I love me. I love the family-friendly show, man. <laughs> it's family-friendly. <laughs> All four-legged family members invited too. <clears throat> But um, no, I wanted to emphasize, you know, we were talking about not spanking, stop hitting your kids and the mental health aspect. You know, I know a lot of men, a lot of uh, adults who suffer from mental health issues. Right. And nothing from from extreme to severe. But there's a lot of people who are in pain. And if you can start creating an environment in your home where your kids can feel safe, they can feel comfortable. Right. They don't have the the strength and the weight of the world uh, forced upon them because you've stopped physically hitting them, because you've shown them what a good leader is, because they know that dad can help them, dad's going to protect them, and dad's going to continue to work on uh, building the relationship and pr- improving the environment in the home. That is one of the greatest things you can give to your, your child next year, right, in 2022, is good, stable mental health. It should not be understated i think that segues well into step four so the fourth step you can take to make all that happen that's getting involved in a network so anthony how how has your journey been with investing in the network side of accountability everything that comes with it you know just the the growth of the relationships the partnerships you're you were doing well you were locked in you're looking to improve and multiple times you've said but when you dropped into the pond with other motivated dudes looking to do the same that's when it really started to flourish. So for other men looking to find their networks, I mean, we're in like nine of them. <laughs> so what what, are, what is some <laughs> advice you can offer those guys? Well, I, I would say, you know, first and foremost, the the examples that I showed my kids of what I had to go through. I, I, I did spend a lot of my time hustling, grinding, becoming better, but I spent a lot of that time by myself. Um, and 
what I would say is when I look back on it, and I share this with my kids, right? I can't believe how insane I was, right? To to do this by myself, to be around people who weren't motivating me, weren't pushing me to get better, and that I, I've wasted so much time. And now that I, you know, my kids see where I'm at and they see who I'm around, the, the people who are motivating me, pushing me to be better, that is such a great example for them not to waste their time, right? To push past the fear, to speak up when you have an opportunity, to embrace who you are and not worry about what other people think, right? Don't have people around you who are going to pull you down. Have people who are going to be pushing you forward, who are going to say, hey, I'm here if you need me. And I think that's going to be the greatest you know, lesson that you can teach your kids about how powerful the networks are. I mean, we're talking to dads from all over the world about how to become better fathers. And my kids see this and they're like, wow, you know, that's, that's pretty cool that you have the opportunity to do it. And I said, yeah. And, and just like I have the opportunity, they have the opportunity. I, I want them to keep pushing forward and, and keep striving to be around good people in their life. Cause I think that's ultimately what benefits all of us. While I wish there was a barrier to entry on using the internet and social media, sometimes I think there should be an IQ test. I do believe that you have universal access to a platform that you're going to be using anyway. So th in this step, we're not even asking more of you. You're already going on Twitter. You're already going on Facebook. You're already you're on YouTube right now watching our show. So we're not asking more of you there. This isn't even an advertisement for FOE. Obviously, I run a membership community. You can join it. Links below. It's fucking fantastic. The men there will help you help yourself. It's what we do. But I'm going to go so far as to say this. Anthony and I, we were on a cigar lounge run by, again, Justin Copeland and, and Corey Reagan. They kicked that thing off. It was fantastic. Got to mix it up with the guys in there. Awesome dudes looking to do some work. That was free. All you had to do was click the link and send an email. Shoot a DM. Hey, man, here's my email. That's That's it. Then you can show up. You would have had a free session for myself, Anthony, and the other men in there. Free coaching, free insight, free answering, whatever question was asked. You could have had that. Dad Twitter. We're constantly, we've had the guys on here for some live streams. We're going to have those men on. I recently recorded one for the Family Alpha podcast. He's going to be coming back onto the Oak and Rock podcast. And we're going to be mixing up with those men. Free. This dad Twitter thing, the spaces, all the men that are involved. There's no barrier to entry there outside of you being a father wanting to contribute to the growth and connection of fathers. Nothing is stopping you from joining these networks. There are Facebook groups. You got Joe Horton of Guild of Dads. There are the paid memberships. You got Elliot Hulse, Ryan Mickler, Jack Murphy. These opportunities are everywhere. Find one. If your finances are tight, Dad Twitter, Justin Cigar Lounge, those are fucking free. It's literally costing you nothing but the time that you're already spending on there. Except this time, instead of sitting and scrolling cat videos, you can say, hey, man, I'm having trouble getting my child to eat. I don't know how to support them in their, their boyfriend-girlfriend breakup. I, I don't know what to do instead of spank. All right, I'm glad you watched our YouTube video, but now go and actually connect with us. Connect with the other men. Just connect with somebody. I don't give a fuck who it is. Find someone. Find a network. And if you're like, well, I'm not going to pay for friendship and I don't want to do any of this online weird shit, cool. Go find some dudes in your real life. <laughs> and I don't know why you talk like that. It's a weird accent, but you do. So stop that. You know, nobody likes that. But go out and meet some people. You know, one of the men, a mentor of mine, his name's Tex. He's been on, he'll be on this podcast. He's been on the Family Alpha multiple times. He's a leader in FOE. He's involved in his church group. You know, so you can make it happen wherever you want it to happen. But this needs to be the year that you find some accountability and connection yourself. Because while you're connecting with that kids or with, with, with your kids, you're going to have to charge yourself back up. And this is the plight of many men. They give everything to, to those they love. They give everything they have to their children and their spouse. They want their world to win. They want their home to be happy and light. And they self-sacrifice their way to a grave of valueless defeat. They go to their grave sad. They go to their grave frustrated and filled with spite. Because they thought by putting everybody else first, that's how they won. That's what a good dad does. And unfortunately, it's just not the case. It's not even unfortunately. Life, like that is just the way life is. It's not an unfortunate thing. That's just the rules. If you want to give value, you've got to add value to yourself. You've got to make yourself valuable enough that you can give it away for free and it doesn't destroy you. And these networks are how you can do that. You'll have accountability. You'll be able to charge yourself back up. You giving to the kids, another man can give to you. Hey, man, 
I, I saw you doing this. That's fucking awesome. That fills you up a little bit. Cool. Somebody recognized I was actually doing some shit because dads are so overlooked that when's the last time you got a compliment to your parenting as a father? When's the last time anybody bought you anything or did something for you specifically because you did something awesome as a dad? That shit doesn't happen except when it comes from other dads. That could be the first time you get a compliment. All of a sudden, you're going to feel a pride you've never felt before. But you'll, you're robbing yourself of it by not getting into a network where that's normal, where men say and do those types of things because there's no fear of judgment for being a man recognizing another man for doing a good job. That's the importance of your network. Yeah, man. And that is needed so much in this world, man. It really is. So the last step, it, right, it goes yeah. against all the other ones. It, it's like the culmination of all of them coming to get together. You do all this work. You build yourself up. You put it together. You put the reps in. Why? Because step five, in the year 2022, you are going to foster independence in your children. And you're going to help other fathers foster independence in their children. Make 2022 the year your kids are free. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm fucking planting my flag in that hill right there. <clears throat> Ow. Yeah. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna do all this stuff to build up the family so our kids can go off without us. It's kind of <laughs> that is the um the, the tragedy of fatherhood, right? You no, nah, it's it's a good thing. You see what you built up. And uh, no, definitely, man. Listen. Um, everything we, we set forward, right. In the earliest stages, when your kids are dependent on you, you want to be the best dad you can be, right. You want to have a healthy attachment, keep them close to you and continually build them up. That is the only way they're going to go out into the world and they're going to be able to be independent. They're going to be able to be their own person and they're not going to have other people influence them or drag them down, right. You, you need a solid foundation and, and all of these steps lead to that. Right. We, we, the first four steps are a solid foundation. We're building strong kids, strong families. These kids become independent. They're out on their own. They don't need dad anymore. And to me, that's, you know, that's the goal. Um, that's the goal of fatherhood. That's the goal of raising healthy, independent, autonomous um, children who, who are going to go out <clears throat> and not only succeed, but they're going to enjoy life. They're going to bring good people into their, into their life. And they're going to be able to share um, who they are and what they believe and how they want to go about it. And they're going to cut the craziness out, right? All the crazy people are going to be pushed aside um, because they have a clear path, right? Because crazy wasn't normalized in the home, right? Violence and, and brutality and abuse and craziness and just sociopathic narcissistic tendencies were not allowed. Because we continually worked. And I, I think, not to get too deep into it, but I, I think that it's important for your kids to have a healthy mindset, to have a good independence, right? To be an independent person. And that's going to enable them to help other people. And that's how this shit stops, right? This is how everybody stops fucking feeding off the government. Everybody's saying, tax these people more, blow that country up. And once we start raising independent kids, we're not, they go out and they don't see everybody as threats. They go out and say, how can I help the world? How can I make it better? So real important. No, it's incredible. When you, when you think really big picture, it, it, it's hard because when you start, you know, going on a little rants like that, my brain starts going like, I'm with you. Like I'm, I'm seeing that future. I'm see, what, like, what does that look like if all these kids were like, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to play this stupid game. Like politicians would not know what the fuck to do. If, yeah. if the state, said you have to wear masks and everybody's like no we we aren't going to do that like what the fuck would happen we would change things overnight and we would all collectively look at that elected leader and be like why are you doing this to us your job is to help like facilitate the movement of funds to ensure like roads and all this shit's taken care of like not a parent figure you're an elected official you need to oversee some like where some shit goes your job is not to baby us your job is not to parent us we are grown men and women in a country that is founded upon revolutionary spirit. That sovereign nature of children needs to be fostered. I would love, absolutely love to see entire states like, fuck you. We're not doing that. We're not jabbing <laughs> our kids and wearing masks and shutting our business down because of your made up reason. You know, and if there was a legitimate reason, we'd have already known it. Yeah. We'd have made that decision ourselves. Hell no, my kid's not going to play sports. Hell no, they're not going to school. There's some crazy ass virus out there. Like, no. 
but we know what it is. We, we make the calculated risk. We're aware we're intelligent individuals and intelligent adults. And I think sometimes the news, you know, politicians, all this, they, their aim is to make you feel like you are stunted, like you are not mentally capable of taking care of yourself and that you need them. And I look around, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you people? We watched a video yesterday called Awaiting Further Instructions from 2018. And and it, I'm, whatever, I'm not going to spoil the movie. Maybe you'll want to watch it. It's called Awaiting Further Instructions. But basically, it's a premise. The TV starts giving instructions. Certain people start following. You're not allowed to leave the house. And it, it does, it's basically government. Do this. Nobody says why. When yeah. you start raising kids who are independent, you want them. Hey, you know, son, I need you to go do this. Well, why do we do this way, not that way? You don't say, because I said so. That's a good question. So let me tell you why we do it this way. Or, and let this blow your freaking mind as a dad. You're right. We <laughs> should try it that way. And if it's one of those little moments where you got some time to kill and you know it's going to blow up in their face, and but in a fun way, in an in in enjoyable way, not in a violent or painful way, you'll be like, all right, you can try it your way. And let them go the long way. And then they're going to be like, oh, shoot, it would have been much faster if I did it your way. All right, now come on over here and I'll show you how I did it. You know, th these are great opportunities to connect, you know, but if you just crush that independent spirit out of them, you'll never see that state rising up against the politician. You'll see more power, evil, money hungry individuals take advantage of them because they don't want to make them mad because growing up, they didn't want to make dad mad. Damn. <laughs> Have a great 2022. Yeah, 2022. <laughs> Let's kill it. Dude, those five steps. So we, we covered <laughs> stop hitting your kids, family goals, mental, physical health, getting involved in a network and fostering independence. If you can do those five things, and those are not small five things, so that's a big punch, but you need all five of them to make that fist tight. You're going to have a solid year and your family will as well. And you'll see come 2023 when we're making that video, you're going to be like, damn, guys, thank you. Because those steps, I'm looking at it. I mean, th these are the steps that I took. The steps that Anthony took, you know, these are the steps that all the men that that head down this path and are experiencing this, that's what they've taken. They stopped hitting the kids. They made the family unit a team. We work towards team goals. You have to lead by example. You've got to embody your values, not just espouse them. And then you connect with others to keep yourself squared away. Like I said, you'll burn out if you're putting everybody ahead of yourself and you have no one to rely on. Every now and then you will slip. You'll need to recharge. And in the end, you build that that spirit that's in you of not wanting to be like other dads, not wanting to be like the, the average mediocre masses, wanting to be better. You instill that in your kids. Go be free. Go do things your way. Go build your world. I've got your back. The hell of a year, man. Yeah, man. Let's get it. All right. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you like and subscribe. If you have questions or any you want further fleshing out of the networks we mentioned, uh, we can put you in contact with all those men. If you're looking to have you know some guidance on mindset, uh, where to start with your physique, just reach out. We, we, we know guys for everything. We don't have an app for that. We've got a guy for that. So we reach out. Guys. We can put you in contact with the pros and then you can go out and you can crush it. It's not watching YouTube videos. That's going to get you where you need to go though. It's applying the information from these videos. So with that said, another episode of Oak and Rock Fatherhood from Anthony and Zach. Y'all stay well. <laughs>